everyone and welcome to this video Song Frontier video. My name is Jay Wakefield and um, in this video I thought we'd try something a wee bit different. Today what we're going to do is we're going to do some cooking and um, I thought I'd do this because um, I've seen you know I've, I've, I've seen a couple of uh, cookery videos from uh, some of my favourite YouTubers uh, notably XW Bell um, who's done uh, cooking with uh, various members of his family, or indeed sometimes on his own. Um, and plus, you know, I, I kind of do know how to do some sort of cooking, which is good. So, um, I thought I'd uh, share with you um, the recipe for uh, one of my favourite dishes, tuna pasta bake. Now, um... Out here, I have all the ingredients. I do actually have the ingredients this time. I'm uh, recording uh, the on the first take. I, I didn't actually have uh, a lot of the ingredients, so um, I'll go through them. We're going to be cheating uh, on some uh, stages of this uh, recipe. Um, so, um, yeah, I know that this is not by any means a do-it-yourself-from-scratch, but it, it will turn out to be uh, kind of a nice meal at the end of it. So the uh, first thing I'm using is um, Dolmio's Pasta Bake Sauce. This is the tomato and cheese flavoured one. Uh, you can get different flavours. I don't know about... Um, I don't know about the rest of the world, but these sauces are available in the UK. Um, I'm sure that there's uh, similar sauces um, available uh, in different parts of the world. Um, obviously these sauces are available in Italy, right? Probably not actually, um, but yeah, this this is what we're uh, using today. Um, we're going to be using um, some grated, uh, mild grated cheddar cheese. These I I get these bugs because um, I don't know. I just I I feel that uh, the pre-grated cheese seems to probably last a bit longer than the uh, blocks of cheese. Probably because it's loaded with additives and sedatives and goodness knows what else. Um, but, I mean, the, believe it or not, do you know what, I don't know why I get these, but yeah. Um, that's what we're using today. Yeah. Um, we're also going to be using peppers. Now, for this, uh, for this tuna pasta bake, I'll need the one, so I'll, I'm going to use the yellow one. And because it's tuna pasta bake, we're going to be using tuna fish. This is John West, so it um, must have been on special. Um, and we're going to be using pasta. Who'd have thunk it? We're also going to be using, and I pl please, uh, please forgive the uh, overexposure. Yeah, do you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna move this over. Hopefully, yeah, that, that'll help it a wee bit. Um, also, gonna be using Walker's ready salted flavoured crisps. Now, um, you're not seeing things, ladies and gentlemen. I am actually going to be using crisps. And um, if you live in the States and you're wondering, um, you know, if, if these crisps are uh, meant to be a cheap knockoff of Lay's chips, no, they're not. These are actually made by Lay's, except in the UK, um, they call them Walker's Crisps. And, um, you know, they do have a very, very similar packaging to Lay's chips, in case you're wondering. Uh, we're going to be using two packets of these, and I'm going to be showing you what we're going to be doing with them a wee bit later on. Uh, needless to say, it will certainly add to the texture. So let's get started. 
put these to one side for a wee minute. First of all, um, we're going to boil some pasta. Seems a sensible thing to do, as um, you know that can be going on in the background when we're prepping the rest of the ingredients. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up this tray that you can't actually see. Um, I'm going to fill up this tray that you can't actually see with pasta. And I'm not going to boil the pasta in this tray, but put, I'm going to put it in the tray first. I've not really done a good job of opening this packet. Hang on a minute. Maybe uh, this will be better. Now I've put this, uh, I've put the pasta in the tray to begin with, so that you can actually, um, so that I can actually gauge how much I'm going to need before dropping it into a pan. Because it's no good guessing how much you need, you know, just kind of throwing what you think you need in a pan, and then you have it made up and you realise either there's too much or too little. This will expand so it might actually be a... Uh, we bet too much, but okay, put it in now. Um, so that's fine. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just uh, quickly grab the pan from the cupboard. If I can find one. I think this will do. I'm going to do just uh, just going to fill it up with the uh, water and I'm going to put the water onto boil. There we go. And um, while that's doing that, I'm just going to add. Um, I'm just going to add a couple of naughty wee things here. Going to add a wee dash if I can find it. Going to add a wee dash of salt. Just for a uh, wee touch of flavour. And I'm not going to add balsamic vinegar. I'm going to add a wee dash of Italian extra virgin olive oil. There we go. And I'll just kind of set that to boil, and uh, when it's starting to boil, I'll take the pasta in. And now, to cut the pepper. I'm aware that the board that I'm using is probably not the right colour for uh, vegetables, for uh, those of you who actually uh, work in a kitchen professionally. I know that... Um, there are standard colours for these things and um, I also know that um, I also know that um, you know if I had the money in the space I probably would get a board for everything you know and kind of do it like they do in a professional kitchen not that I could actually work in a professional kitchen because my visual impairment health and safety um, they wouldn't actually do it for me I could uh, burn myself quite easily and uh, that could hold an employer, a uh, prospective employer liable. Uh, plus, I'm not sure I could uh, deal with the stress of being in kitchens. 
Certainly not, not in restaurants. I mean, it's no wonder Gordon Ramsay has a mouth on him. But I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is uh, off the frame, I'm just gonna scrape all the seeds out of this pepper and uh, throw them away. Nobody wants uh, pepper. Nobody wants a uh, pepper plant plant growing inside of them. Not like uh, the episode of the Rugrats where uh, Chucky eats a watermelon seed. Okay, sugar, I've just realized there's more in here. Now, that's the pepper sorted out, that's de-seeded. Um, time to cut it and uh, the best way to cut it I was always taught at school was to actually use what's known as the bridge cut and I'll demonstrate on the smaller piece first um, the way to do it is to kind of hold one hand over like a bridge and that that will stabilize what you're trying to cut and then slice put the knife underneath the quote unquote bridge and then slice and um, I was taught that uh, when I was eight years old and in uh, Mrs. Gelman's class for those of you who went to Temple Bank uh, she was one of the best teachers in that school in fact a lot of the teachers at Temple Bank had uh, their qualities um, I don't think there's uh, one that I didn't really um, disrespect, although at the time I, you know, obviously did <laughs> kick off with some teachers, but who didn't? You always had uh, your teachers that you kind of disliked, but bigger picture, yada yada yada. Um, now I'm going to dice these at um, really, it doesn't matter if you uh, dice them up into a fine powder, because that's not what we're going for here. And of course I'm right handed. So um, it was good that I put the uh, camera to the left. So you couldn't see what I was doing. There we go. And I think... Um, I think that water is ready to accept the pasta, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tip it in. And I know I'm just going to spill it all out. I might as well just accept the inevitable. There we go. Excellent. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a wee tablespoon and I'm just going to kind of start in so it's all submerged as well as you would like into 
the water. It's kind of a good thing I've done that because I'm now needing this dish to kind of put uh, the different prepared ingredients in. And that's okay. It's uh, okay to do that. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do the other side of the pepper. Um, I always find that, you know, when you try to slice something that's, uh, well, like a pepper that's kind of round and hollow, it uh, doesn't necessarily hurt to kind of pound it flat a wee bit. So once again, I'm going to bridge cut. Um, you want to be careful as you can when operating, when uh, working with knives. Um, you know, you don't want to have a nasty accident. And I always uh, tell a knife joke in my unboxing videos. There we go. Come on. Forgetting to do the bridge cut. Hair dirt. There we go. And uh, the bridge cut seems to be one of the safest ways to cut something. Um, obviously, some of you will know this, but you know, certainly there's there's going to be a lot of people who don't, and and that's okay. You know, that's that's perfectly fine. Just means you get to learn. <laughs> We go. Sure, there's lots of things that I'm doing wrong. Um, oh, never mind. There we go. Once again, we've got some diced pepper. Very nice. Um, There we go. Now, uh, that's that's all the vegetable cutting done, so I'm going to put that aside uh, to wash up. And now, what I'm going to do is sort out the tuna. I think um, the best way I've found to actually uh, deal with a tin of tuna is to open it in a dish or something because then I'm not the number of tins of tuna I've had going to the sink it's not really that funny um, oh, where is my tin opener kind of need my tin opener ah there. Oh, there it is Tin openers always go missing. Um, no electric tin openers here, just regular manual ones. Now, when you do open a tin of tuna, it will have uh, juice pouring out of it, and um, it's a good idea to kind of get rid of that juice before actually using the tuna and be careful when you cut it there will be sharp edges on the tin and you don't want to cut yourself like I think all of us have done at some point and because uh, tins can be quite sharp when you cut them uh, when you open them you'll end up with blooming paper cuts Alright, so that's um that's all the juice away, I do believe. Next thing I need to do is grab a wee fork. I'm just gonna put the tuna into a dish for the time being. There we go. 
because it's in chunks and what I want to do is chop it up into smaller chunks so that I can actually run it through the pasta bake rather than just have it as a big kind of thing there in the middle of it. Right, I'm just going to do away with this. shot I'm going to wash my hands as well because it's uh, don't like the feeling of getting that uh, brine all over my hands a wee bit oily and uh, mink excellent so um, to chop the tuna down into more to chop it down you just kind of Make a chopping motion with a fork. Don't need a knife or anything like that here. Oh, and as the pasta's cooking, just kind of stir it a wee bit. And, um, you know, every so often you might want to test a piece. So the tuna's all mashed up and the pasta is boiling. In fact, it's uh, about ready. I've, I've uh, done a texture test and it's uh, quite nice and soft. I can actually uh, kill the heat on that a wee bit. Moved it over to a bigger hob. This hob is heated. Best thing I can do now is open the jar of pasta sauce and then just haul it in. Now there's still a wee bit in the jar. We we trick to get that out. Add a tiny wee bit of water. Oh, and I don't want the heat going too high on this either. Because, I mean, this, this will spit at you. Crivens. Yeah. Like, like that. Like that. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's not what I want. That's, no. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what could happen. Get the wee spoon and I'm going to stir it and then hopefully that will stop it. Okay so the pasta, the uh, pasta baked sauce is now boiled, the pasta is now ready. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to drop everything into this dish. There we go. And then just kind of scrape the remnants out. And while I've done that, and while, I was, uh, while the camera was not rolling, I've actually set the oven. Um, a good idea to set it to about 180 to 200 degrees. Um, not entirely sure what gas mark that is. Gas mark that is probably about six or seven. I've not used a gas cooker uh, since I was at Hull University. I'm just going to mix this around a bit. Um, now I'm going to drop the tuna in, there we go, now I've not really put anything in this, because I don't feel it's needed, and next thing to do is to drop in the actual pasta. Spoon. Sorry, I apologise there for the uh, loud noise. I think I left this in a bit too much. Whoops. Oh, and if those things stuck to the pan, try and wash them up as quickly as possible. I mean, that's. <sighs> Otherwise, you'll never get it off. Yeah, that, is, that pasta is definitely ready. 
Here we go. And I'm just going to stir this in. And after I've done that, I'm actually going to put cheese all over the top of it. Okay, so that's when we actually ran cheese over uh, the tuna pasta bake. Um, I actually did it with my hands. Literally just kind of grabbed it and splodged it on there. But I did wash my hands first. And uh, I advise that you would do the same too. If you don't, I'll come round to your house and talk about how germs are bad. Now, that's not the tuna pasta bake ready, as we've got to bake for half an hour. So far it's just tuna pasta, some of it boiled. So now I'm going to throw it into the oven. There we go. And um, it's a good idea at this point to set yourself a timer. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set it for 30 minutes and then just kind of set it now and after 30 minutes what we're going to do is we're just going to we're actually going to crush the crisps and uh, put them straight on and the way that you're going to crush the crisps Open the packet a wee bit, just a tiny wee bit, so all the air gets let out. And then just go. Just give it butt heart. Okay, so um, now it's time to take this out the oven. Smells delicious, by the way. If you're watching this on smell vision I'm sorry if I'm making you hungry. Look at this. Delicious. Kind of looks like a badly made lasagna. Right, now, I've pre whacked the crisps. And just going to kind of crush them up a wee bit more. Now, I'm not going to put these on with my hands. I'm actually going to just kind of pour these on. So, Gotta be kind of careful about getting an even spread of crisps. Hang on. Just kind of scared the whole part out. Actually, what I might do, grab a fork and then just kind of spread them around that way. There you go. Best to have an even spread because, like I said, I mean, we use this to enhance the texture of the meal. Mm. There we go. Right. Now we're going to go on to the other packet of crisps. Now you're probably thinking there's a lot here for one person and if you're thinking about uh, for the one sitting then yes you're right this tuna pasta bake can be microwaved just kind of throw it in you know a couple of minutes um, you want to listen it out, out for it hissing or singing as it were um, and it'll be absolutely fine um, you know and this this will do me for at least a couple of days you know I mean, I've made this tonight, you know, it's, um, so it's, I mean, it'll do me, like I said, you know, for a good couple of days. 
There we go. And now I have actually got a covering of crisps. Or potato chips if you're American. Um, on this uh, tuna pasta bake. And I'm going to stick it in the oven for probably a couple of minutes. Um, you need to be careful because, I mean, obviously, you know, potato chips are cooked already, you know, so you don't want, you know, and, and with them being quite thin, you don't want to burn them because that is very, very easy to do. Right, good. I think that's that sorted. Can throw these packets away. And yes, it is a wee bit depressing opening a brand new packet of crisps only to then kind of, you know, squash them into submission. There we go. I'm just gonna, just gonna kind of pop that back in there. Just wait for a couple of minutes now. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a box. Um, pretty sure I would have had uh, bigger boxes. Um, I did, uh, I'm actually starting to think my uh, former flatmate bought those. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm going. I'm going completely. Uh, I'm going completely gaga. I bought them. Um. Yes, definitely. So well. Ah, you're right enough. So I've got a box here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put I'm gonna put um, what I don't eat tonight into a box and put it in the fridge. Um, and I will advise you that the last thing you want to do is to leave that in uh, a Pyrex dish because it will kind of stick and, and you'll not get it off and um, everyone loves a nice clear Pyrex dish okay not much now It's time to serve. There we go. Switch off the oven. Just let that cool down. Always good to. Always a good idea to kind of leave the oven open. Kind of let it cool down. Uh, it'll cool down quicker that way and then the fan won't need to run as long. Right. There we go. We've got a spoon. Hey, that's right, I'm right-handed. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to serve myself some oh yeah and the cheese will drip so you know just kind of be careful of that the amount of cheese I ran through it um, Excellent. And I think what I'll do is I'll serve that 
with uh, a wee bit of lettuce and maybe some coleslaw. So um, there you have it. So here it is, my tuna pasta bake. I've added some green shit and um, there we go. Um, so thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video um, and you'd like to see more from me, please uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, where there are other videos there, you can uh, sit and watch if you've not already done so. Um, <clears throat> and, and once you've done that, um, I hope you will all join me for my next video. If you go into Subscription Manager on YouTube, you can actually have YouTube take the time and trouble to email you when I upload a new video.